Right, hello guys, Lucian back for more discussion about Battlefield. Um, this is quite a good one today. Now, my Battlefield videos are not doing so good as my armor videos. I knew this would be the case because my community has changed a lot since I did tons of Battlefield videos. But I know that if I keep talking about Battlefield stuff and I bring some Battlefield things back, it'll develop, it'll change, we'll get that back in time. And, uh, you know, it is something which interests me still. Uh, people say, like, well, why are you still into Battlefield? Why do you even want to play Battlefield? It's because, like I say, you know, you do get fun, interesting um, gameplay. You do get some fun, interesting mechanics and just situations happen with Battlefield, which you don't get with armor. And also, with armor, I do get continually fed up of just the performance of that game. Uh, and I'll be talking about that more in some other videos, but I, I do get annoyed with armor um, because it's so frustrating trying to get good um, performance out of that game. And yes, you can get it sometimes, but then the amount of times where it's problematic or, and the setup you have to do there to get that to happen is just very frustrating, you know? Whereas with Battlefield, it is a game where you can just jump into. You can just get that reliable quality of gameplay and performance which is just always there. And that's a really big positive. That's a big difference between the two things. And uh, it is something which I very much enjoy. And also, you know, I, I like slow considered tactical gameplay where you can kind of consider moving and da 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 and all the strategy there involved and the logistics as well of armor but i also very very much enjoy close quarter action teamwork that you get with battlefield that's but you know some of my favorite um, I would say overall my favorite gameplay from Battlefield is the close quarter stuff. You know, I very, very much enjoy the gunplay there. It's something which I do enjoy with Battlefield 1 uh, is the gunplay is fun. I might not agree completely with the way that they have changed that genre around with the really full automatic stuff of Battlefield 1, but, you know, whichever way you look at it, the gunplay is enjoyable. And you know how I know that? I know that because despite my frustrations about the team balance and everything else, um, I still find myself coming back to the game I still find myself when I'm actually playing the game going do you know what one more round one more round one more round and people that know from when I used to play Battlefield a lot know how funny that is where I'd be up like you know till the early hours of the morning and then I'd be like okay last round last round and then it's like okay one more round one more round <laughs> you know and, and often like I say I'm a glutton for punishment even when I've played a round where we got horribly horribly destroyed for whatever reason I still find myself going like, God damn it, right, well, let's, let's try the next round. Maybe it'll be okay. So something about this game keeps bringing me back. Now, one thing I want to say to you guys, uh, I get a lot of... Uh, I get a lot of comment and feedback from you guys because many of you have been watching me for a long time. Many of you uh, started watching my channel uh, back in the days of Battlefield 3, even by company and, of course, into Battlefield 4. But the main thing is that I know many of you guys are more veteran players because I think the style of the Battlefield content I've generally always done appeals more to those kind of longer term players because you know naturally that's the way I kind of go about doing things is the kind of more slow you know the way Battlefield used to be basically uh, and of course most of you guys that watch me are the city you've got the same mindset you're looking for that team play you're looking for that kind of hard fought battles not just the steamrolling bullshit which we do see so much of in Battlefield now now what I'm talking to you guys about today is, you know, I am continuing on uh, still trying to see if we can't make some improvements and headway in the game itself. Now, I make no, you know, I, I do not hide the fact that I have been extremely frustrated with the game, extremely frustrated with the developers um, in the, their, their sort of inaction as such to actually make changes and, and focus on the veteran player experience and the team player experience. Now, with that said, you know, my previous video I was talking mainly about matchmaking, I was talking about the balance of teams, but you can't deny they, they have made some changes. So, for example, the scoring in the game, the scoring was a out of whack for ages and I did see recently some people saying like oh well if you sit back sniping um, you can still get high on the scoreboard you have to be a pretty bloody good sniper to still get high on the scoreboard you know it's not impossible it's not to say that you know it's not a legitimate way to get high on the scoreboard you know you, you still you, but you'd have to be pretty good you have to actually get the kills first you know so and, and often it's not even a case of being good enough to get those kills it's just a, a, a case of uh, there actually being enough opportunity to get those kills because sometimes you know I tell my guys very often um, if there's a sniper who's pinning us down I just say to the guys oh, just stay out of his line of sight if he can't see you he can't shoot you you know so it's um, but nonetheless, like, they did increase the scoring uh, for objectives, and that does replicate onto the scoreboard. You know, if you fight and you actually get on those objectives, you arm those objectives, if it's rush, or you get on those objectives in conquest, it does come back to you um, on the scoreboard, and that's really, really positive. Uh, also, things like killing vehicles that like you see me doing right here. You know, if you get those vehicles down, you get those scores. You know, you can see my score, look, here, like, racking up. Look at that. See, a ton of, ton of score right there 
for actually getting in on those vehicles. So they have improved that. They have put changes in there. Um, another thing which comes to mind off the top of my head, the ability that you can go up to teammates who, if you require ammo and stuff, and get like ammo off of them, okay, something which you couldn't do in the past. So they have made some changes, but it's all been kind of sort of uh, subsidiary, if I will. It's subsidiary changes. Now, also, I'm going to say right now, um, back in the past, I made a load of suge suggestions about kind of things to improve, like the scoreboard. Um, but, you know, even when I was making those suggestions, I pretty much came to the conclusion at the time that just making improvements to the scoreboard was never going to be enough because the more you think about it, you just start to realize like, look, if you're a team player, you want to see your score replicated, right? But if you're not a team player, if you don't care about that in the first place, then it doesn't matter how much score you get, they're not going to care about that either. So you have to then start looking at other ways to do it. And this is where people start to talk about things like where they say like, well, you know, you can't force people to play objective. You can't force people into what you're doing. That's always what I hear. I've heard that so many times. And it's like, yeah, it's true. And I've never said that. I've never said, let's force people to play the objective, right? And I agree because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we come back to that whole, I pay my money, I could do whatever I want. Yeah, yeah, fine, fine, fine. Okay, fine. But look, here's the thing. The thing, it's a disparity, okay? It's an imbalance. I've always said this, which is that if you're a player who likes to just run around getting kills, fuck around, troll, you don't really contribute anything to the overall objective of that game mode, okay? Well, Oh, look at me failing hard with this rifle. <laughs> but yes, um, if you do that stuff, it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing in your team, okay? So you, if you're killing and just focusing on that, and, or you're just ignoring objectives, or you're pissing about, it doesn't matter what anybody else in your team is doing, you can do that regardless of those other people on your team. But if you're trying to fight for the objective, and you're trying to have good, strong team play, and you want to have a hard-fought battle, you know, a good balance between both teams, you are not going to get that, ever, Unless the people on your team are actually contributing and they're actually doing what they need to do and making, you know, I guess to a point, smart choices, okay? Now, that's where things become difficult because you go, okay, well, how do we balance that? That's where we come back to that matchmaking, you know? It's the only way it's going to happen. If they can't find some way to balance up the skills and the way people contribute to games, then you're not going to have that. And here's another thing. Oh, my God, that was right in the face. <laughs> um, you're not going to get that. And the thing is, is that there's a reason why people come into objective games and screw around and, and focus on kills in objective games. And the reason is, it's easier for them. If those players were playing like stuff like, uh, you know, a free-for-all round, okay, if they're playing like some kind of free-for-all free team deathmatch, it's more difficult. And the reason it's more difficult is because the, all of the other people that are playing in that round are also focused on getting the kills, okay? But if you're in a game of rush, if you're in a game of conquest, if you're in a game of domination... There's a lot of people who are focusing on the objective, let's say 50%, which means that the other 50% they don't, who aren't worried about the objective at all, they don't have to focus on that. So like when I'm playing, I'm thinking, right, how can I get to the objective? Oh my God, there's a tank. We need to take that tank down before we can get onto the objective. Guys, are you moving up on the right? You know, we're, we're taking into account other considerations. But if you're a player who's ignoring all of that objective and all you're focused on is the kills, the only thing you need to be thinking about is where is that person? How can I bottleneck them how can i pin those people down how can i rack those kills and so basically it's making it easier not only is it making it easier for you it's actually giving you a big advantage because the other people will be distracted by talking about what they're doing thinking about how to get there they'll be prioritizing different things whereas you as a person who is only focusing on the kills your only prioritization is how to get those kills so there's a again you know there's a disparity there between an objective player and a player who just wants to piss about and get the kills right so that's one thing. And that's another reason why, you know, you need to get that with matchmaking. You're not going to get that any other way than with matchmaking. So that's what we need to head towards. Now, this is where it takes me to things are looking up, things are looking positive. And also, again, this comes back to the veteran players, because people that are veteran players, longtime players of Battlefield, um, those by and large, not exclusively, by and large, veteran players, from what I hear from a lot of you guys, it's that's kind of what they're getting for, because that's how Battlefield used to be. Because in Bad Company and before that, that's how Battlefield used to be. So a lot of those players are still seeking that experience, but then they get um, pulled down, they get dragged down, they get um, you know slowed down and uh, restrained by the people, the, the, the I guess the sort of the dross, you know, the, uh, the meat shields, the people that are just like, you know, slugging through the rounds and not really thinking about what they're doing. It drags it all down. And as I say, if we had better matchmaking, then you would perhaps see a decrease of that. Not eliminate it probably, but you would definitely see an improvement, I think. 
And so where it comes to with things looking up and things getting better is that um, I had a pretty long, not just me, but a lot of people, uh, we sort of got into like this big Twitter conversation yesterday uh, with David Serland and Dan Mitri. Dan Mitri didn't uh, reply to any of the messages we sent, but David Serland did. He replied a lot. Um, David Serland replied tons and tons. And I will say as well, you know, David Serland, uh, he's a producer at Dice. He's one of the people that I respect most at Dice. And the reason for that is he engages with the community. Uh, he worked, obviously, as you guys know, Dice LA. He's a lot to do with the CTE. Uh, not only does he engage with the community, he has always agreed and championed the idea of team play and that things need to improve. He was the person that I spent a lot of time speaking to about the team play initiative at Dice. And I have... I have very much made it clear to him that I was unhappy about that. You know, this is the other thing that I like. I very much enjoy about David Serland. And people are going to go, "Why don't you just fucking marry David Serland and get a room with him?" Yeah, all right. <laughs> but but you know, trying to find people that actually engage with, engage with you as a community and and get where you're coming from is often quite difficult to find. So it, it's very very appreciated when you do actually find these people uh, who will speak back to you, who will get involved with you, and will agree on some points that you're making and actually have a constructive dialogue with you it's difficult to find uh, because often people are thinking about other things and so you know it's something that he does he does get involved with the community and he does work towards making the game better and also right now he's the only person as far as i can see who is going to actually be able to do what we need to happen to actually improve the gameplay for veteran players and also f- also for new players because you know as i said did i get to kill this guy no i failed i remembered this I remember that was a horrific fail, and that's a good example of why I should have just shot that guy instead of knifing him, right? Anyway, okay. So, David Serland, I'd spoken to a load before uh, in Battlefield 4 and a bit around Hardline, but like I say, we never really got anywhere. Um, I sent him an email a day or two ago, and like I say, you know, I've sent out a couple of emails to people that I have contact with, and he's the only person who got back to me. Um, And he had a very, very constructive dialogue with me over email about things that we can look to do in the game. Now, I'm not going to go into details yet, because it's all very kind of speculative. And also something that I made very clear to him was I said, like, look, you know, and and this is kind of what happened with the team play initiative, right? Which was I was like, it all sounds great. But until we literally see anything, words, 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 right? And I said, you know, you can't blame a lot of people for being quite cynical at this point, because often, you know, we've been said that things are going to happen, and they haven't happened. And I think often, that's very much how a lot of the veteran community feels, you know, some of you guys who've been playing a long time, you do feel at this point, like, you know, we've been told things time and time again, and these things didn't happen, right? But often there are various reasons for that there are various consequences like i said back in my previous video i would love to know who put the hammer down and said we're not going to have that team play initiative i would love to know who said that right but as a big company like dice they're always going to have a range of different things happening and they're always going to have different priorities going on and sometimes things just get cut and you say sorry it happens like that with my work right now you know Uh, sometimes I'll have worked very hard on a design maybe work for two or three days on a design and then somebody comes over and says we can't run that now it's not going to happen and I'm like oh great well fucking fantastic you know wasted all my time on that and now we're not going to use it that's just what happens when you're you know in any business okay sometimes the situation changes and things can't happen now like I say doesn't mean we have to like it doesn't mean we have to be happy about it but sometimes that's what happens right um the important thing is to try and keep moving forward and as I say um from speaking with David Serland I I do feel now like there is some genuine positive hope I think that things are going to look up if things come to fruition as we are discussing about. Now, I will try as best I can to go into more detail about that very, very soon. I know this is very vague and it probably sounds kind of bullshitty to you guys. You're just thinking, oh, what, what? You had like one email from this guy and now you're talking it up as a big thing. But no, look, we, we, we ha- I, I asked a load of questions and I was very, very frank about my opinions just as I was in that last video where we talked about the matchmaking and then David Serland he got back to me he went through point by point answered all of my questions and like I say from what he got back to me there with I do feel really positive like there is big room for change and I think like I say you know as a company as a business they've had factors which are outside of some people's control there um, and ultimately at the end of the day like everybody always says a business is a business a business wants to shift copies um, but I would just say they are very very aware of how many veteran players have been voicing their dislike or they've been saying that you know they've stopped playing the game fully at this point i had so many of you guys coming onto twitter and telling me that you fully stopped playing battlefield at this point in time um and and they are not blind to this they are very aware of this the question is and the question that i have said going forward is what do they do about it now 
because at this point I really feel like this is a big crossroads I've said that multiple times I think I said that at the end of Hardline and I said you know like the next Battlefield is going to be make or break it um, I said that about this game I said you know this Battlefield would make or break the series for me and I think that's never truer than it is now I think well, it'd be very interesting to see what happens this year. I think this year is going to be a critical time to see what kind of new uh, changes are implemented through. Now, do I think we're going to see like a huge revision uh, in the matchmaking of the game this year? No, I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's too big of a deal to actually happen. But would I like to see groundwork happen? Yes. Would I like to see conversations happen where I can say to you guys, look, we have had a conversation about this and this is something they're going to take seriously into the next game. Yes, that's what I would like to happen. I feel like... You know, from Battlefront, we saw with Star Wars Battlefront where it's like, look, you know, you shift a shit ton of copies, but then the community disintegrates because, you know, there isn't that there isn't that sort of game there. They, you know, you design a game for casual people. Well, hey, casual people by nature will generally play a bit and then give up. It's those hardcore players. And, you know, I think that's a great analogy for this. Uh, the Wii. The Wii is a good analogy for this because Nintendo, with the Wii, they decided like, hey, you know, we're going to abandon our core audience. We're going to go straight after. We're going to go after the, um, you know, the casual market. And, you know, you know what's happened over time with the Wii is that casual market has disappeared because casual players, by their very, very nature, play a bit and then disappear. Hardcore players, by their nature, stick with a the franchise. They stay it and they play hard all the way through. And that's pretty much always been the case. Um, I actually did see someone on Twitter also messaging saying, enough already with this casual versus hardcore thing. It's, uh, you know, it's been dragged out. It's uh, been, it's like a, flogging a dead horse at this point. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. I kind of disagree with that. I mean, um, like it or not, being labelled a casual gamer, there is a difference. There is a difference. There is a difference between being a casual gamer and being a hardcore gamer. You know, there really, really is a difference. And it's not just down to skill. It's not like a commentary on that. You can be an extremely good player and play small amounts of time in a game, 100%. You know, it's not about that. What it's about is it's about people... St- I did shit here, by the way. That was a really big fail by me. I didn't get any kills. Three guys, like, right in front of me. Um, but, yeah, it's about sort of brand loyalty it's about your what you contribute to the game as a whole and if you're a regular player contributing in and getting involved then you do contribute more overall you just do um casual players will play the game for a little while and then they may go to something else or not or you know they might get that one game and then they never come back to it but people that have been around for years and years and played you know episode you know franchise after franchise it's not it's not about how much time you necessarily have we all have lives we all have work that we have to do it's not about that it's when, when i talk about casual versus hardcore anyway casual player is someone who literally will buy a game they play it a little bit and then maybe maybe they will maybe they won't get the next franchise there's probably other factors involved it's probably less about how much they enjoy the game it's probably more about how that game has been sold to them really that's how i kind of view the casual gaming oh shit light tank oh oh okay i was thinking light tank i'm gonna run away but no i tried to get in on it good job myself even though i died but still a little bit of respect for myself right there um Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about very quickly, because we're right at the end here, is what am I going to be doing going forward? Well, you know, I've spoken for ages about wanting to run, like, Battlefield 3 servers. I do have one right now, but it's generally unpopulated. I am not, you know, I know, I know how this goes. People don't get on the servers unless I say, hey, at this X time, we're going to be playing. Get on now, okay? But what I'm planning to do uh, in the coming weeks is I want to set up a Discord. I want to get, like, a kind of team play objective battlefield community happening it's gonna be a side to the bso stuff and also i don't know how much time i'm going to invest personally in it but i would like to create a group of people who are getting on at set times through the week and saying like let's have some fucking hard games you know whether it's battlefield 3 whether it's battlefield 4 whether it's battlefield 1 notice the one i missed out there okay whether it's one of those games get on with other people get some gameplay let's get some hard action happening because battlefield is still a great great game doesn't matter which iteration it is it's a really really good game when you get on with other people who are well skilled and you fight for those objectives and you come down to those small amount of tickets at the end it's still one of the most exciting experiences so let's make that happen guys i'll give you more information as and when i have it about what i've been discussing and how you know all the things that are going to happen Until then, thanks very much, guys, for your support. I'll see you next time. Please support my Battlefield content, guys. I'm bringing it back, and I'm working hard to try and actually have some impact on this game and the games going forward. Thanks very much, guys. I'll see you next time.